And so naturally for the next part, we want to put in some resin. Here I have some water washable in ceramic gray. And you want to mix up your resin really good, new or old, but don't violently shake it. Just kind of twirl it around for a bit where all the polymers mix up. And this is probably a good time to talk about the safety. So since we're using water washable with not as, I guess, powerful as let's say regular resin would be. And this is why I choose to normally use water washables as it's a little more friendly, but you want to make sure you wear protection on your hands, which gloves are included as we see here and also some masks and another thing to consider is make sure you're in a very open environment where there's airflow so preferably like in a garage or somewhere where air can be recycled quickly but yeah let's go ahead and pour resin in here and we're going to go to the max line as this printer is smart enough to know how far the resin goes up so if you put too much it's going to give you an error and if you don't have enough it actually knows that too and it'll stop the print and tell you to add more so i think i'm I'm gonna stop right there, just right below the mark. And you guys can see we do have a little bit of bubbles, which is okay, they'll kind of go away. And they're all at the top, not a big deal. So we can go ahead and start our first print, which is this little root that was included. We'll click on print and it starts. And right away this thing tilts. You guys can see maybe or not. So it's actually checking some stuff looks like. It's saying that the mechanical sensor is being calibrated. And now our Z axis is going down. All right, so it just barely touched the top, which is interesting. It's not dunking, there it goes, now it's dunking in. But yeah, it looks like it's started. And here on the screen, it's actually saying it's out of leveling right now, so. And I can actually see this was kind of moving up and down there. All right, so it looks like now we started. And we can see there we're on the 0% uh, on our first layer, looks like. There's our exposures there, the model height and where the print's at. Okay, so it just did its first layer, I heard it. And the bed actually went down and that went up. And we also, it looks like our recording, because it says record there with the camera. So, so let's see, can we change anything? All right, so these are just parameters, but there are buttons here. So it looks like settings, pause, stop, and I'm not sure exactly what that means, but uh, let's click on settings here. All right, so we've got two bottom layer counts, normal layer, bottom transition layers, transition type, and bottom layer height. So here we have exposure, looks like, yep. And then more settings. Okay, so we got print mode, high speed or lower speeds so yeah we do have some adjustments there which is really nice all right so it looks like it's bugging along and it's tilting for sure there it goes so it actually tilts the front very cool and then the z-axis just moves up whatever it needs for the next layer looks like definitely a different way of doing it so we can see we got a little bit of uv light bleed there on the side but it actually looks pretty cool and yeah it's bugging along and you can kind of hear some crunchy sound as it peels off and then start sprinting again. And you guys can probably tell maybe the reason you can't put much more resin in there is because when it tilts, it really goes to the limit. So yeah, right off the bat, very nice and quiet and quite interesting to look at. And we can also tell that our screen has changed to like this different view here where it kind of shows us the percentage in big font has this cool little animation and our file name and then the layers that are finished which is 22 and the layers left and if you just tap anywhere it goes back to this menu so and i think this button here is what switches in between all right guys so the rook is printing along and everything's good but what i want to do is i want to try okay so the screen also dims down as you guys saw there to pause it and see if we can see if our model is stuck on there. So let's go ahead and click the pause button. It wants to confirm, we'll say yes. And look at that, it's all coming up. And the VAT actually went up too. And sure enough, we can see our print under there. And it definitely goes up high enough for you to see. So now all we gotta do is push play or continue here and it should start printing or continue printing where it left off. And there it goes, super cool. So if you want to check, you know, if your print is stuck after a few layers, like maybe 50 or something, you can pause it and see if it's under there and everything's good. But yeah, looks like the 5 Ultra here has no issues whatsoever with sticking and all the automatic bed leveling and whatnot else it uses to have the perfect first layer, it seems to be working. All right, so our first print is done. I have a few things here. I got a sheet with some stuff in it and also some water here. So you do wanna put on some protective gloves. 
to protect your skin from the resin. Also use your mask. I like to have a rag around and three tools, which is a couple scrapers. This is not the one that comes with it. It's just the one I use, but it is metal. And this one here is plastic. So the plastic is going to be working in the vat and the metal one is going to be working on the plate or scraping the models off the plate. And the little brush helps us clean the model. So let's go ahead and push this back a bit. We'll unhook the bed slide it out well actually i just forgot something that's quite important and it's in this box and it's actually a drip tray so this thing does come with the printer and you guys can see it kind of has like little hooks here that go around the bolts kind of like that and so whenever you take this off you're not gonna accidentally drip it onto the front here or the screen and that's a really nice little addition so now let's go ahead and take it off so now when we do this we can potentially have drips like we are having now, you can see, and it's dripping into the pan instead of, you know, all over the printer. So now we'll go down to the sheet and hopefully you guys can see it's stuck really good to the textured plate. Now let's see how easy it comes off. So I'm gonna grab the metal spatula, see if we can't break it loose. So I would say this held on a little better than I would want. And they probably sliced the test model, you know, to stick better than normal as, you know, your first model should always stick, right? Now, because we're gonna continue printing, I just slid this thing back on and latched it. But if you were to clean it, you would just wash it in water since we're using water washable resin and it's actually pretty easy to wash. Same thing for the tank, you would just empty it out or recycle it back into the bottle, straining it through a filter and then washing the tank out. And that's what makes water washables pretty easy and fun and they do have less odor. So now let's bring our water in here. And I probably should have had the glove on the other side. So now I'm gonna have to use my left hand with the brush. But yeah, we're just gonna duck it into the water. And you guys can maybe see it started to shed the excess pretty quickly. And we can take a brush and actually brush it to get more detail, but we have to be very careful. And you have to have a very soft brush not to ruin the texture of the model as it is pretty soft as it hasn't cured at all yet. But yeah, what I noticed, if you just slightly brush it over detailed items like words, letters, or anything that needs to be more sharp, that really helps a lot. And better yet, if you are going to do resin printing consistently as a hobby or whatnot else, you probably want to get a wash and cure station as that would make your life a lot easier. But I noticed that curing models is actually better just naturally letting them dry and then set them somewhere next to UV light or in a bright room, but not in direct sunlight as direct sunlight could actually damage it because it'll you know try to dry it too fast and the UV is too strong. So 